What does it take to be a great entrepreneur? America's top business experts speak out. The thing I've learned in my career is that longevity counts. Uh, success is probably not going to be overnight for most of us. I never wake up without thinking of here are the things we're going to do today and at the end of the day we often look at each other and say okay look at all we have accomplished and here's what tomorrow is. A very long time ago I took a class in time management and one of the things I learned in there is eat a frog. Do that first thing in the morning. Do the worst thing you've got on do all day is eat a frog. Welcome back to Money Hunt's Small Business Challenge. Today we're talking about time man management and specifically how to find the time to build your business. Specifically, we're looking at Anthony McKinney's three challenges, which are how to delegate better to his employees, number two, let the employees know who's boss, and three, putting systems in place so he's separated from the day-to-day -day operations of the business. Now, Robin, you saw First Shuttle's operations firsthand in doing the field piece. Is there anything else we've missed here? Is there anything else we need to appreciate to solve this problem? Yeah, what I think we really need to look at is the fact that Anthony is this incredibly talented guy with a much broader background than just the limo business. I mean, he has a master's degree from Parsons. He understands design, marketing, advertising. He has a passion about those things, and he's not getting to use any of those talents in his business. And those are the kinds of things a CEO could really be doing yeah. to really be growing this to the next level. Because he's not just a limo driver. This That's is a guy right. who can build a world-class business. Okay, Tom. Well, Anthony's built a very successful business around highly personalized customer service. And I think what he needs to do, one of his challenges is fostering that level of commitment that he feels and the values he's established in his company to the rest of his company. You know, and, and continually reinforcing what he has founded his company on. Um, he also needs to extract himself from a firefighter role. Of, of, of having to put out every mm -hmm. fire that comes up. Either find someone to do that or actually bring management up to a level where they can handle that as well. Um, he also, the big thing, he needs to make time to be the president. There are a lot of key things he's going to need to do to build and grow his company. And he needs to make the time and take the time. Yeah, I would think so. Joe? Uh, what I'm seeing is he's over-managed and under-led. Mm. He's so micromanaged, he's so busy swatting the flies, he doesn't have time to patch the screen. Okay, and how, what are some of the ways of people dealing with that? Because I know you deal with that at Franklin Covey all the time. Well, he's got to look for the patterns in his day-to-day -day operation, pick those out, and then put them in the hands of the owners. Mm -hmm. The first place to delegate is back to its owner. He's doing the jobs of a ton of other people. Yeah. Um, the people who are his consultants are only doing a piece of the action instead of fully owning that responsibility. Yeah. They're, they're not owning their responsibility. I, I, I didn't like on his piece where he said that these people call in if they have a tummy ache. You remember, yeah. remember he said that? That's right. I mean, let me ask you this. What about owner-operator type things? Uh, would that, might that be a potential solution for him actually making his cab owner, van owners, actual owners, part owners of the business? Yeah, I think that's, I think yeah. that's a good possibility. Uh, or establishing someone in a, in a, you know, a higher level position that, you know, if, if they need to, uh, the go-to guy, establish a go-to guy so it's not always Anthony. Yeah. But the good idea about the owner-operators is that then they will be incentivized to, to be there. To, they'll have more of a, a stake in, in succeeding and more responsibility. So yeah, that does make some sense. Because it's their profits yeah, that are exactly. on the line if they, if they keep missing these dates mm -hmm. or something like that. Right. And it helps, although it does take somewhat away from, from his control. You know, I, I'm hearing sort of differing signals sometimes in Anthony's, mm -hmm. in Anthony's presentation because you know, on the tape he says he's worried about his employees, he's worried that they're not going to be there, he doesn't trust them. And yet at the same time, did you notice he mentioned every one of his key people I by mean, name? He really cares about these people. This, this isn't really a business. It's an extended family. Well, what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. Is, is that a problem or is that a, is that a benefit? Both. Yeah. In what way? Well, it's a problem in the fact that he's doing their job for them because, well, they're his buddies, they're his friends, and they're taking advantage of it, or at least it appears. See, it, it's a benefit that. because yeah. he's got some loyalty. He's got a pretty good retention of employees. I mean, most of his employees are sticking with him long term. Yeah. So he's got to retain the good and, and weed out the yeah. uh, problems that come he with need, that. He needs to impart a, yeah. with everyone what he has founded his company on. He cannot possibly clone himself and be everywhere at one time. Yeah. So he needs to make the changes and impart what he's you know, founded his company on. Yeah, I yeah. think so, because it's really hard. I mean, we, anybody who's in a family business knows this. It's very hard to fire a relative or a friend. Mm -hmm. if, you see, if, you see me, if you see me as a friend, you can't give me bad news. It's just impossible. I mean, just looking at Anthony, just, just seeing him, he seems like a very low-key, friendly guy. You know, yeah. this is someone who I think is, just has a tough time by nature delivering the bad news that sometimes has to be delivered. I think the message is you can be the boss without having to be a snidely whiplash, you know, snarling yeah. kind of character character you know getting a clear sense of mission and purpose of what his business is about and communicating that's going to give him I think the tools that he can make decisions around these uh, management issues mm -hmm. the ability to say no well, let's focus on that now how what are some of the things he can do to delegate 
specific things. Three quick and dirty, give it to its owner, give it to someone who's better than you, or give it to someone who wants it. Okay. And there's three quick ways to delegate. All right. So All right. keep it in the hands of those who own it. Okay. How specifically, what are we going to tell him specifically about, um, about putting systems in place? What are some of the things he needs to do there? Well, I think he needs to put a system in place that actually delegates responsibility for specific opportunities in the company. You know, give people the responsibility to, to step up to the challenge without always being there to catch them when they fall. Um, I think he needs to start imparting some of those, you know, those uh, things in his company and employees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see often with a lot of companies, they will pick the uh, anomalies, the unique, the great stories. I think Anthony needs mm -hmm. to focus on the mundane, the boring stuff that's day to day and systematize that first. Not the unique stuff or the anomalies, but really the boring stuff that just eats his time up every single day that's predictable. That's the stuff where systems shine on. Yeah, and I think, to be honest with you, that is also going to be the solution to the third challenge, which is letting his employees know who's boss. If he is just uncomfortable delivering bad news, well then, by all means, he should not be the person who should, who right. should deliver that's it. Nice that. He needs to put something or somebody in place. He needs a bad cop. That's he right. needs someone who can do the job and actually enjoys doing, you know, who actually enjoys doing it. Such people actually exist you know people sometimes who inspires maybe as much fear and awe as just you know niceness who can sort of offset so that he can step back and be the good guy Robin I'm just wondering too about incentives I mean it, are there ways that he can be incentivizing his employees to to be more okay. responsible to come in more often I'm hearing some great ideas here I think we have some ideas as to how we're going to handle all three of Anthony's McKinney's challenges we're going to be back and give some advice to Anthony McKinney and tell him exactly how to solve his small business challenge right after this Welcome back. Our guest, Anthony McKinney of First Shuttle, is back, and his challenge is finding the time to run his business. Let's get this problem solved, guys. Tom, you first. Well, Anthony, I think you've built an incredibly strong business, and it's you know, apparent through discussing it with you that you've got a strong personal commitment to building and growing that business. But I think there are three key things that you need to do in order to get this on solid ground to move forward. Uh, the first would be to extract yourself from a, a firefighter role, that you're always the go-to guy. Um, either by putting someone in place that does that or bring a level of management up to meet that need in the company. Um, the second thing, which I think you're doing very well, it's, it's very obvious from the passionate side of, of your business that you're building, is strengthening that first family, or the first shuttle family, um, letting them know continually what you've built this business on and expect out of them. And the third thing is making the time to be the president. There are a lot of key strategic things that are needed to do to grow a business, but you've got to make the time and actually take the time to build that business. I think I can help you with that third thing of making more time. Your choice is not to choose between the good and the bad. Your choice, Anthony, is to choose between the good and the good. And you've got to figure out which is the best of those. Uh, if you look at vision, leadership, and management, three simple things. Vision picks the point where you want to go. Leadership plots the course and management executes the plan. Now, you're a master on the execution. You've got to get back, step back one step into leadership. And you've got to get focused on what it is your company's about and communicate that perfectly to your employees and be careful not to dictate means. In other words, you need to say, we're into customer delight versus saying, you need to greet them by name, pick up their bags, and welcome them to Newark. Don't give them the specifics. Let them figure that out. That way they can be empowered. They can be spontaneous, creative. They bring their own uniqueness, which will make this first shuttle family even better. So. Yeah. 